Good evening. Happy Sunday. Do we have audio? Oh, we do. Audio. Why do you gotta, why do you gotta start out so creepy all the time with a freaking duck? Hold on. I can do I can do the nerdy poo too. There you go. What's happening around here? I, I really don't know at this point. Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome back. It's Sunday evening. That means it's cast and camo time. We've got Chief Fox TV. We've got Fish Soccer, and we've got myself, XSX. Happy weekend. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, Fish Soccer, how was your weekend? It was, you know, I uh, got to eat uh, quite a few bugs and beans, and we ended up Perfect. hitting that 2K mark for Wounded Warrior. So now I have awesome. to do another 2 2 fishing stream. So, uh, y'all, your wish came true to embarrass myself in the great state of Texas in a 2 2 again. It'll be happening this week, probably. So, at least you're getting used to it yeah no it's it's not there was like the last time i did there was like you could see dads grab their kids and not let them like, go anywhere near me <laughs> like we're in texas in the bible belt this ain't this ain't like california or oregon or seattle no offense if you live there but jeez just, like don't blink an eye if someone's in a tutu there in the bible belt you see a grown man with a beard and a tutu and a fishing pole you don't know what to think Right. They run. Oh, they I run. think they do know what to think. That's the problem. Yeah, well, I'm gonna rock it. For good guys. Nice. Chief, congratulations on your deer. Deers. Deers. Oh yeah. Oh, I got two deer this year. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Day two of his. I feel thing. bad. I do feel bad. That's no, you shouldn't feel bad. You I should feel bad. God. Honest to God, I wish you would have killed deer before me. I really felt bad over that because I know you've been working your butt off over it. That's 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 a part of it. Embrace the grind. Embrace the grind. That's uh yeah. actually you know who told me that when I was I was bitching about Joe. It's like I'm putting in so much time in a deer stand and I'm just having the worst luck. Shooting at two deer, hitting them. And non-lethal hits both times because of a freaking shoulder blade. It's like, and Jamie said, "Embrace the grind." And I thought, you know what? Good advice. I'm gonna embrace the grind. Until yesterday, when I was dealing with the dentist, the dental thing, and then the other guy from our party shot his buck that I wish he wouldn't have shot, but he did. And I was like. Now I got to cut up deer. I don't want to go. I'm not going out hunting. I got, I'm not going out hunting. No. So I got to take a break. I'm going on a work trip. I leave at 3 a.m. in whatever it is, eight hours. And uh, I'll be gone for until Thursday. So I won't have any hunting to do. Maybe next weekend. Maybe. I got to get my boat in storage, though, man. It's... I mean, yeah. It's that time of year. As as we're it's about to talk about, it's that time of year. Yeah, but what's more important, deer hunting or fishing? <sighs> I, I've been wanting to ask you that for a long time. Just for you, what's more important, deer hunting or fishing? Important? What do you pick is your top one that you'd rather do if you was told you can only do one thing. Man, that's that's hard. That's a hard question to answer because... I love hunting. Like it's my passion, but I really love fishing. And, and in particular, I really love ice fishing and ice spearing, which I'm not even giving a seg a segue to our topic tonight, but there's just something about ice and ice fishing that I, I've just always loved. Um, but hunting, man, it, it's, it's so good for the soul. You know, you sit in that stand and you're just, well, if you're not streaming, you sit in that stand and you're just it's zen you're relaxed yeah, you're watching you. nature you're listening to things and it's great like it's just it's good for the soul ice fishing to me is a lot of the same types of things as as hunting is when you're fishing in the winter or in the summer you, in a boat or whatever you know you got to steer the boat you got to do all these things you're casting and it's it's kind of like you're an octopus you got arms going all over the place ice fishing and spearing man you just you sit back and chill and you have a couple beers and you have some fun. So that's, that's a tough question to answer. What's important. I can get fishy around. 
I can only get deer for a couple months. So unlike some people, I don't have a freezer full of deer right now. So I'm st I still got to work at it a little bit. I ain't saying no more. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're so much fun to give a hard time to. You, I don't, I don't like you no more. Matt, it's fine. It's fine. There. There. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, there. Now, I'll see, say. he's he found a he found a new found toy. A new <laughs> yep. He found a new like, toy yeah, within our software. Up. He's got to expose the toy. Uh, taking my he ball and I'm going it, home. Steve. Seriously broke it. <laughs> there we go. You have to fix it, fix it. What did I? What do I have to fix? I don't know. He went away for a while. It was. It was okay. He shot his camera off. He used his new little. Uh... Oh, but then he came back and he wasn't there. But it's, it was bad. Really? I seen me there. Well, it would have been a, it would have been a stream improvement had that actually happened. Fish. All right. So, anywho. Congratulations on all, all all sincerity, Chief. Congratulations on your deers, plural. They were nice deers. Um, I was uh, I was very happy that you got your deer. And Fish Soccer, great work on the Wounded Warrior, Chief. You as well. Uh, both of you guys did a, a great job this weekend raising money for uh, for a pretty awesome charity. So that's uh, and Gamer, congratulations on winning the giveaway. You. Somehow you have won the giveaway every single week. We're on week nine now. Gamer is unprecedented on uh, winning the giveaways. So congratulations. But tonight, tonight, isn't that a song? There's probably a couple songs. Smashing Pumpkins, I think. Might even be, a, I don't know. It's a song. It's that time of year, as we've talked about. You wouldn't know it by the temperatures, which has me a little ornery especially when I see Minnesota is going to be in the sixties again this week, mm. little ornery because it's that time of year. We need to start making ice. And the reason I want to start making ice ASAP is because one of my passions and loves is ice spearing. And that is going to be our topic tonight. And we are very lucky to be joined by, I call him Papa Greg cause we got a good vibe. Uh, but Greg Weller, the president of the Minnesota Dark House and Angling Association is joining us tonight. And we're going to talk a lot of things, um, dark house spearing and just ice fishing kind of in general, maybe. And I'm going to, I kind of gave Greg a warning that most people here that are watching is live or maybe watching or listening afterwards from our communities. They don't know spearing other than I've, I've streamed some spearing in the last couple of years, but outside of that, a lot of people just have no clue, which is there's nothing wrong with that. Well, we're dealing with people from Australia, New Zealand, Europe, you know, all over the world. They don't not all these places have ice or can can go spearing. Um, so what I would want to start out with, Greg, is just the, the association itself. Kind of let everybody know what the association is and what the purpose is for. Um, I mean, I could do all of that, but I'm going to let them hear it from the expert first. <clears throat> okay. Um, the Dark House Association was founded in 1986. Um, and the reason it was founded is there was a push to get rid of pipe spearing and ice fishing in the state of Minnesota. Um, yeah, well, the DNR was in favor of it. The resort association was also pushing to get rid of ice fishing because uh, they were afraid it was going to hurt their summer fishing. Um, Muskies Inc. joined on board because they thought that we were harvesting all their muskies. Um, our philosophy is is that we educate people as to the benefits of pike spearing and we educate kids we have 15 chapters in the state of minnesota and it's it's pretty much all about knowledge um, as to what we do so if i'm where I'm at in, in the state of Minnesota, I, I, when I looked at the 15 chapters and exclamation point dark house in chat, uh, if you want to get to a link to the, the Facebook, at least the Facebook page, um, do I have to 
go to a specific chapter within the state if I want to be a member of the association, or how does that work? Can I go to anyone? Oh, God, we lost Greg. Scared him away. What did you scare him? And he's back. He's a magician. And, and we lost his no audio. audio. Hang on, Greg. We lost your audio. Dun, dun, dun. Um, I have a feeling it's on his end. It might be on your end, Greg. Did you hit a button? You might need to like leave and come back. Might try maybe try leaving and coming back, Greg. If you can hear us, can't hear me. Can you? Right, you can type to him in here, can't you? Oh, oh there oh, he is. Okay. There he goes. So while while we get Greg back, um, what I, I what I can do is at least share with people that don't know much. I got to get organized a little bit here so I can let him back in once he comes back and get him situated. Uh, talk about the just like the spearing in general and what it means, because a lot of people think dark house spearing, ice spearing. What is that? How does that work? What is it? And the concept of ice spearing is if you think about uh your house there he's back is he back we're good now he's back okay. and i can hear him there we go all righty um what was your question Get up on this screen hill real quick what was the question what was the question um <laughs> what well oh i was asking with 15 chapters chapters of the association that are kind of all around the state it do i have to be in a certain chapter or because like me, I live in the, the Minneapolis area, but I do a lot of my ice fishing, ice spearing, say north of Brainerd or three hours north or whatever it might be. So how, how okay. exactly does it work with the chapters and your membership? Okay. You can join any of the 15 chapters. Um, I guess I suggest you belong to the one closest to you so that you can be involved in it. Um, and there is a Metro chapter, um, which is, it, they're a good chapter. They have a, a banquet every year and then they have meetings, which they discuss what they're going to do for the year. Uh, like all the chapters do. Um, but, uh, some people belong to two different chapters, three chapters. Okay. How so, many total members... Uh, are there does it fluctuate by the year like what is, it, what is your does. average members um right now we're sitting between 14 and 1500 members statewide no kidding you know I'm, I'm glad you're happy with it i'm not oh um, <laughs> i wish we had a lot more oh let's get more um, yes but the problem is is we are so efficient in working with the dnr and the legislature that uh, we don't have any issues. We don't have any problems. Um, we've patched up our differences with uh, the musky fishermen. And right have now... Have we, though? I, I think for the most part, we have. Um, at, at, at one point, um, there was a lot of fear um, that we were spearing muskies. Um, the walleye guys say the same thing. The bass guys say the same thing. Um, that we're just a bunch of bloodthirsty uh, people out there. But um, I've attended uh, Muskie Inc. meetings at their request. And, uh, you know, told our side. Um, people think that because a muskie comes through the hole that uh, everybody spears it because it's a big fish. Well... You can tell the difference between a muskie and the northern pike when they come through the hole. Um, anybody that would spear one, speared it on purpose. And if we find out about it, we do push to have people charged. Um, we're not, we like to call it a look and release. Obviously, we can't catch yeah. and release. Um, but... Uh, yeah, like I say, um, I would suggest, if you wish, join the Metro chapter. 
Um, up north of Brainerd, well, there's the Grand Rapids chapter and the Bemidji chapter. They're up there. Um, but, you know, you can join whatever one you want. So are you actively involved with what, when they change laws, whether with the fishing regulations or because I know they I think they just changed at least in Minnesota, they changed some laws as regarding rough fish. So and, it, and if you could comment, if you want to or if you could comment a little bit on the difference between, you know, because I think a lot of people when they think spearing or ice spearing, dark house spearing, it's northern pike, which is the most of the you know, the, the, the case, the time, but there is rough fish. You can spear yes. rough fish and they and changed we can the also... definition of rough fish. So now you can't spear certain things that you used to be able to spear. Right. And on that aspect, we were not consulted. Um, the, the one big hot topic that's got a few more years to run is the um, Northern Pike zones. Our group was extremely involved in helping to set that up. Um, what it was is the D DNR said, well, this is what we're going to do. What do you think? We're going to do it no matter what. So we helped set up the boundaries uh, from the northeast, the north central, and the southern. Um, we also had some input onto uh, the limits. Um, so this this rough fish thing is it's it's still pretty new and it's still in the formative stages. Um, I've talked to our lobby guy about that and uh, tell him I told him I said you know we need to keep our fingers on the pulse of this uh, because people will spear uh, eel pout if they come through the mm -hmm. hole. Uh, because they're a delicious eating fish. Um, if people would take the time to eat them, uh, they'd throw walleyes under the tires. Uh, they're so they're so much better. Um, carp, nobody cares about. Um, we're Are also you, rough fish? you guys can hear there. Well, all the fish that got, you fish for. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, we are allowed to spear rough fish. Um, which are the carp, carp or buffalo? Like yeah, buffalo. Um, we're allowed to spear catfish and whitefish. Fish, um, really? Yes. I don't know of anybody that does, but it is in our in our ability if we wish. I I grabbed the the, the laws here to see what the rough fish is. Um, go through the novel. That, that is, was a big, I think that was a pretty big change for us, wasn't it? Yes, it I, was. It, it seemed like it was a pretty big change. Uh, pole fishing spearing. I'm not seeing anything in the book that says what's what. Um, other species, let's try that. I know uh, suckers we can spear too. Uh, red horse and... Uh, white suckers. I know that it, gar. What about gar? Did that change? Yeah. Nope. We can still we can still okay. spear gar. Okay. Um, and all of these changes won't take effect until 2024 uh, because the books are already out um, until I think February 28th or maybe it's 29th this this season um you have a season and a, a a creel limit on these things or what yes um our, our season starts on november 15th and runs till the last day or the last weekend in february we don't get to spear till the end of the pike season um, and depending upon what zone you're in is how many fish, um, a good portion of the state is we're allowed to take up to 10 Northern Pike. Um, and you have to know the lakes. So, you know, what size limits, 
and all that. Um, so, not, uh, not Greg, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I think just okay. real quick, I think I want to pause. I want to come back to that because that is kind of where I was hoping to go next is what you were just talking about. But to, what I want to give an idea of for people is what Dark House spearing is. And the best way that I have described it to people, and maybe, <clears throat> Greg, you have a better way of describing it to people, but the, the best way I know how to describe it is if you think about your house and looking out a window of your house at night whether you have your lights on in the house or during the day you know vice versa so that you always use that window example if i'm standing in my house and i and it's nighttime outside and i have my lights on i can't see anything outside that window which is what the fish are seeing like right so they're down in the water where it's light yep. and if they are looking up they can't see us in our fish house because it's dark. Right. We, we can't see out just yep. like that window. Yep. You want to and vice versa. Yeah. And it's, so it's vice versa. If it's, we are sitting in the dark, just like if you're, if somebody's standing outside your window, it might be creepy, but if you're somebody standing outside your window and they're looking inside and the lights are on, they can see inside, but you can't see them. So right. it, that's the concept. And furthermore, it's different than ice fishing because with spearing, you're cutting a, I mean, name the size hole you want to cut, but it's not just a six inch, eight inch or 10 inch or 12 inch hole that you're, you would normally would use for ice fishing. You're cutting a big a square or rectangle hole, whether, whether it's two by two feet, three by three feet, three by four, whatever it might be. And you're sitting right. in this dark house using that, that logic of light contrast and using a decoy, whether it's a wooden decoy that looks like a fish or a live decoy or both. And you're waiting for that fish to come in to your hole where you use what everybody that sees my stream, when they see it, they're like, you're using a damn trident. That's a pretty good way to describe it. It's, it's a spear. It's got six times, four times, eight times, nine times, whatever it might be. But yeah, it kind of looks like a, a, a trident. Right. Uh, but that's what we're, that's what we're using for uh, basically for our fishing line. It's not a line. You're using a spear. Right, yeah, you're using a spear. Yep. That's right. If, if I'm following this, because you guys are like, from Texas, this seems crazy to me. Y'all are going out on the ice, cutting a big hole in the ice, mm -hmm. turning off all the lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And standing near that big hole where you could fall in. Sitting as close to that hole as you can, yep. I mean, that sounds crazy. To me. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> it's I, I think it's I, I think it's the coolest thing. I think for me just obviously awesome, I, I love getting fish. Um but just sitting there for hours staring down a hole in the ice into the lake and you get to see bass swim through or bluegills or crappies or perch or craw you know you can just sit there and watch the crawfish down the the at the bottom of the lake it's, it's it's tranquil it's relaxing you're you're sitting there watching like a giant live aquarium and to me that's super cool sound cool yeah it, it, yep. it is awesome yep that's and, about the way it is yeah and and it's like deer hunting like we were just talking about deer hunting i haven't seen a deer in two freaking weeks and sometimes that's how it is with spearing you can go to a your honey hole where you know there's a lot of pike and you're there and and you don't see any pike for two three days that it, it, it happens i am um, the first year that they opened up black lake to spearing um it had been closed for 20 some years so there was big fish in there i sat on that lake seven consecutive days in different spots and never saw a northern guys next to me were, were, were spearing 42 inches and I never, never saw one, never saw a fish or a northern at all. So it's it's not a guarantee. No, I, I no. The, here's here's the thing that I I also say this what guys, um, and I'm probably using terms that people that have no idea about ice fishing are going to be like, what in the hell? What did he just say, just say about his tip? If you're using tip ups, the fish have to bite. Right, they have to bite. If you're spearing, yes, they don't have to bite. Yes, they just have to be curious. They have to be active and curious. All they yep. have to do they is come close. come close. <laughs> they don't actually have to bite. Yeah, 
that's the nice thing. And for me, that's that's key. Um, because it's actually quite exciting when they do tear the. Well, yes, yeah. And Sarah did just put a a clip into our yeah. our live stream chat with um, the pike that, that I speared last year. Was it the pike? Oh. Yeah, it was a pike. That was, uh, and I had I had a gi- I had a giant musky. Well, for me, it was a giant musky. I've never been that close to a musky. Last year, uh, I'm not going to say the name of the lake on stream, but holy balls, was that freaking awesome. That was so cool to see that big girl come in and just kind of shook the, I had a live sucker down and she kind of grabbed it. I think she grabbed the sucker. Maybe I don't know if I could have to watch the clip, but she just kind of circled around. Oh, those things are so massive. And you're right. If you don't know the difference between a muskie and a pike when it comes through your hole, you should probably should be spearing. You shouldn't. Correct. Definitely tell Correct. the difference. Um, yeah. I would not want to be sitting on the lax and have a 54 incher come swimming through the hole. Um, that would be freaky because that's a big is, fish. Yeah, they're they're prehistoric. Okay, so we're going to jump right into something else then. Talking about big fish in a spear hole. Sturgeons. Do you feel the same way about spearing sturgeons as you do spearing pike? And that's not, I'm not trying to yes. set you up. Okay, you do. Okay. No, no. Yes. Um, my, my youngest son is the fisherman, and him and I have always talked about applying in Wisconsin where you're allowed to spear sturgeon. Um, but we've never quite done it uh, because it's a ways off. And it's a lot of money to get set up to spear sturgeon. It takes a special spear uh, to spear them. But no, um, if there was a season to spear sturgeon in Minnesota, I'd be trying it. I, I, the only reason I ask, I would, I don't know. I just, I, part of me feels like that sturgeon, if it's a big boy or a big girl, that fish could be 60, 70, 80 years old. Yes. And, you know, and I'm like, God, do I want to do that to a, <clears throat> that's like a prehistoric fish in fish terms. It's like yes. a dinosaur. And yes, a pike is a pike. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a pike yes. Is a pike. Uh, you know, the, so for me, it's slightly different, but I, I get the concept is the same, yep. but I don't know that I could do it. I don't. And well, I love spearing. I don't know that the, I could do the it. The thing is, is in Wisconsin is I, I don't know how many people apply. There's an application fee. Um, they only give out so many licenses, and they have a quota. And I didn't realize once that. The, once the quota is reached, they set off an alarm on that lake, and boom. It's done. Season's <laughs> over. It's closed. Yep, and I think it's rare that the season goes two days wow oh really um yeah it, it's not a whole lot of yes it's not a lot of fish it's not a lot of fish that uh or sturgeon that can be speared in wisconsin oh, i'm trying to true but sturgeon also do not come active to have uh eggs until they are 20 to 25 years of old age the females the males be can become able to um, to fertilize the eggs at age fifteen. So them fish got to be quite a few years before they can have eggs. Yes, and also be able to uh, the males form. So right, that, and that. spearing sturgeon, everybody throws a decoy down, but they're not attracted to the decoy. It's the movement that they see, and it's it's dark water. It's not uh, it's not crystal clear water that they're spearing sturgeons in. Um, I, I know there's a push in Wisconsin now to get northern pike spearing. Um, they have a different system of getting laws passed there, um, but there are seven states where you can spear in the United States. Um, North and South Dakota 
you know, it's going to raise a ruckus, but you can spear walleyes, you can spear bass, you can spear trout. Um, people are doing it like actually under the water a lot of times, right? With a spear gun. Is it the same laws that apply to you doing that? No, that's different. Is it, or is that different? Okay. I don't know. Yeah. They, they call that harpooning in Minnesota. Um, the state of Michigan, you can spear Northern Pike and there's a special lottery system wise where you can spear muskies in Michigan. Kidding. Yes. Um, and, and North and South Dakota are relatively new to the spearing game. Um, Montana, you can spear different fish, not just musk or not just northern pike. Um, and Alaska, I have no idea because I'm not chiseling through six feet of ice <laughs> to uh, fish, spear a fish. Two feet's bad enough. Two feet. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that, like for me, going early in the season is key because a it's better. The fish are more active, and and the ice might only be seven inches thick, maybe 12 inches yes. thick rather than 20 foot. Once you get to that 18 inch mark, man, that is a pain in the rear end to use your, even if you're using an ice saw, like a lot of guys will use chainsaws. Yes. Um, I've used chainsaws to me. Chainsaws are no different than an ice saw. Honestly, I, it, to me, it's the same amount of work. Um, but I, now that and brings up a question. How do you, everybody that spears does things kind of different yep. right everybody has their own ways of doing things yep i what i like to do when i'm making my hole i'm going to use my auger because it's the quickest and easiest thing to use and i drill four holes and then four holes and then usually a total of 10 holes on the end uh, and so i've got four holes across four holes across and one on each end and then i use my eye saw that's whatever six seven feet long and yep. i just saw from hole to hole um and I'm not, I, I, it's like, it's like a game every year. It's like a game. Like how, how bad am I going to make this hole? How crooked is it going to be? And it's awful. Um, and sometimes it comes out perfectly great. I'm like, it's like, I've been doing this my whole life. I'm perfect at, it. uh, what's, what's your method of, uh, of cutting a hole? Are you using a, a saw only or what's your method? What I use, I drill two holes with my auger. And then I cut three lines, um, straight across, down, down. And then if the ice is, at, you know, that 12 inch thick, um, then I hit it with a chisel and it'll crack between the two holes. Um, then I take and suck in half so I can get it out. And that's how I cut my hole. I've... I've never tried that. You not use a chainsaw? Uh, you you can, uh, but there's a lot of clowning around with a with a chainsaw. You have to clean it so there's no oil on the bar or in the hopper, and then you have to file the teeth off on half of the half the teeth. Otherwise, it just won't cut. Is my understanding, and I don't want to ruin a chain just to uh, cut a hole. So it's the ice is thick or to a certain level of thickness, a chainsaw ain't doing you any good anyway. It's only going to get you down no. so far. Right. And I think the the bar on my chainsaw, chainsaw is 16. Yeah. <laughs> there ain't nobody out there with a 24-inch blade Eddie, chainsaw trying saying, to cut through I, the ice. I grew up in old growth uh, redwood forest. It makes some pretty big, pretty big saws. Make yes. Shows. All right. That is true. Now, one of the other things I think, and I would, I'd, I want to know your thoughts on this, but one of the things that I think is super cool about the what I would call the the dark house spearing community at, in Minnesota is it's it's not just the guys that spear the fish. You've got the guys that are making the spears. You've got the guys that are making the decoys, and sometimes it's the, it's that person is doing all three or just or two of them but it's like a whole it's like three different groups of people that are kind of all together and they all appreciate not only the the craftsmanship but the art 
that each other is is coming up with some of these spears are gorgeous and i could never afford one and the same thing with the decoys i mean I, I, there's so many incredible artists that are making decoys in minnesota and north dakota and south dakota um uh, uh, Wallace Decoy. Uh, everybody in Minnesota seems to know who Wallace Decoy is. I mean, that dude. Wallace that or dude's an artist. W Wallace, the young kid yeah. from uh, from the Twin Cities. Wallace Decoys is the. Okay. Is there, it's their art. They're yes. gorgeous. Um, some of these guys are getting two hundred dollars for a decoy. <sighs> um, I wish. I'm not going to spend that kind of money. Yeah, because about that time, then a muskie would come up and chew on it. Um, right. But yeah, it's we have several spear manufacturers, that, and they make their spears one at a time um, in our organization. Um, we have probably right around a half dozen um, decoy shows in Minnesota in the winter. Um, we are the final contest of the National Fish Decoy Association carving, and that's held in Perm every April. Um, and guys compete throughout several states, um, to gain points and, um, go from there. So... Yeah, it's it's quite a quite an organization. We have guys that make tongs for pulling ice blocks, yep. um, and it, it's it's pretty much um, the sky's the limit on their imagination. I saw one spear that a guy made. It was a dragon spear. The entire body was welded scales. He brought okay. it to one of the shows, and it had the tail on the head, and he was just displaying it. But that spear, he had sold for $2,500, and it'll never see water. No. And that's artwork at that point. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's right. For sure. That's right. Uh, um, and, and in the world of, of decoys and making decoys, you've got, you know, you'll have – art and then you'll have what they'll call working decoys and the working decoys are what guys like greg and i are going to be using in our in our holes um and a new thing coming that's i, I guess i don't know how new it is it's new to me the wobbler uh oh, i don't yep. have a wobbler i want to get a wobbler and for those of you that are like what the hell is he talking about a, a normal working decoy, right? So, and those of you that have watched me spearing on stream, you're are gonna know this. But the decoy is a <laughs> gave her. The decoy is attached to a string. And in my fish house, I use an Eskimo, um, the fat fish. And so I've got my decoy tied to the center of the the fish house. And however, you know, everybody again, everybody does it different. Whether it's every ten minutes, fifteen minutes, five minutes, whatever, you give that string a jerk and that decoy swims around in a circle right well a wobbler is a little different because it doesn't have fins it doesn't have a tail and it just wobbles down and when you pull it up it just wobbles back down which i think is the coolest thing ever uh but i don't i don't have one i'm i'll probably get one for this year because i did lose one decoy last year so i'm gonna need to get something different um do you have a preference okay. on on decoys what you use um i use strictly artificial i don't I don't mess with live bait. Um, I your standard decoy, when you pull on the on the string, the rope, um, it swims in a big circle. Um, I've got several that are flippers. When you jerk them, they go in a big arc up towards the surface and then back down in a big circle. Uh -huh. Uh, and it's different, and it attracts the fish. Um, I use golf balls that have spinners on them and different things like that. And so all the all the childish people can laugh. They call them teaser balls. Yeah. Yep. Um, and another one that I like to use is oh, about a four five inch daredevil with no hooks 
And I'd leave that lay on the bottom. And every so often, I'd just reach down, pick up the rod, snap it up. And then it just flutters down like a wobbler and let it go right to the bottom. Then it kicks up a little bit of mud. And that pulls fish in. Um, yeah. I haven't tried that. Yeah. It's, it's an old way that they used to do it. Um, it works great in a river with a current because then I just leave it sit halfway up and then it just flutters. Yeah. It just does um, all on its own. Yeah. Um, and I also keep a panfish line in my spear hole. Uh, and when you catch a little perch or a little sunfish, that's a big attractant to the northern. Because when they're fighting the line, they're really fighting. And then I just unhook them, throw them back down the hole. Because they're, you know, they're usually the three, four inch stuff. It's nothing that you're going to keep. Um, so I generally have three to four lines in the water. Um but the only one I'm catching anything on would be the panfish and my spears. So I'm strictly legal that way. And ask, are you, are you allowed to actually fish in the same time you're spear fishing? Like, you know, with a rod and reel in line and yes. In Minnesota. In the... Yeah. In Minnesota on the ice, you're allowed two lines. Um, you can run a tip up in a spear. You can run a panfish in a spear. You can run two tip a line. Yes, oh, a spear clay okay. fish. Yep. Okay. It counts as a line. Yep. So, and if you want to put two lines down your hole, then you just set your spear outside, and uh, you can go that route. True. Then you're just angling. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, I, yeah. I thought about. I didn't never really thought about doing that until, as I was reading some of the things on on the website for the association, I'm like, I guess that makes sense. Like. Y- if you wanted to do catch and release, obviously we can't. I mean, I'm going to tell you a story, but you can't do that with spearing. It's not catch and release because you're spearing the fish. Nope. Uh, but you could sit in, a, in 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 your spear house with a spear hole and watch the northerns come in and catch them that way, which would be, to me, would be just as fun as spearing. If not, you know, it's about the same. It's just cool either way. Uh, actually, it's not the same. Um, it is extremely filthy when, cause I've done that, uh, before Mille Lacs could, you could spear on Mille Lacs, we would cut spear holes and then run a big sucker under a bobber. Well, when you're fighting that pike on a fishing rod, he is throwing water all over you, uh, coming <laughs> up out of that hole. It's, it's a mess, but that's it's, true. it's exciting to watch them. It's really exciting to watch the fish. The- come in they're a fun fish to to play with most people don't like them they're slimy and, and this and that uh but i my first pike this year so did you in michigan when i um, went to go see my dad i caught some pike up there like yes yeah <laughs> they're fun well, i mean they're, 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 they're a good fight fish they taste good too like i don't know clean them right yeah they taste yep. good i i mean I couldn't tell any difference between like the bass or the pike or anything we were eating out there. Have you ever had them pickled? Oh, that loves pickled fish. That's the best way to eat them. Is pickled. Is is he awake down there? Those pickles. I don't know. He's (laughs) He's just trying to mess with me. That's all. (laughs) I'm not. I'm not a pickled. I don't like pickled fish. I don't like anything pickles, and I know. Chief doesn't like that anything with pickles either. And I it's funny because I just sent him uh, I just sent him to Texas past weekend. I got a, a pulled pork sandwich last night and I take a bite and I'm like, where'd this pickle come from? Who puts pickles on a freaking pulled pork sandwich? You're ruining oh. the whole thing. There's three pickles and it just ruined the whole thing for me. I was so excited for that pulled pork. Tasty though. Yeah, you're in I mean, Kentucky. I don't understand why you can hate pickles on everything. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, pickled spears. <laughs> now uh, Fern Dog's bringing it right back into the uh, spears, yeah. pickled spears. Okay, so let's talk for a second about the 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 chunk of ice that comes out of the hole. I'm assuming your take is 100% of the time you're taking that chunk of ice out 
and putting it on top of the ice, and then when you're done, you're putting it back in. Yes. Do you ever push it under? No. Um, there, there's two reasons. One is there's a theory that that block of ice underneath the hole, underneath the ice, will scare the fish away. It's not normal. That's that's uh, what I would always think. Yes. Yep. And by me pulling the blocks of ice out in the chunks and all that, when I'm done, I never sit in the same place twice. I take all them chunks, I shove them back in the hole, and then I mark it. And the way I mark them, it's easiest that way. And then in 24 hours, you can walk over it, drive over it, whatever, and it's all froze back in because it's just the cracks that are freezing. Um, there is no set way in Minnesota as to what to do with that block of ice. Um, that's just my personal opinion. A, a lot of, uh, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but there's a number of resorts that will tell you if, if they know you're out spearing, they will tell you do not pull that block of ice out push it under because if it sticks if it stays out too long now it's going to freeze to the ice and you're not going to do anything about it and when we're either coming through trying to plow or you got snowmobilers coming through they're going to hit that block of ice and so they say absolutely do not pull that ice out and push it under yep. and i hate that because i don't want to push my blocks of ice under at all no no it's to me it's it's easier to pull them out um, and uh, I'd lay them in the snow so that I can kick them loose. Um, if the ice is thick enough, I'll have my side by side or my truck. And if nothing else, I'll bang that block with my, my vehicle and break it loose. Um, early season, it's not that hard. I mean, the, right. They don't freeze down that fast. Yeah. Right. When it's 25 below, that's a different story though. Oh, Yes. When it's 25 below this year, I'm hoping to be in Texas. Then you tell me where your secret spots are for spearing, and I'll I'll take your spot. I'll take your place. <laughs> are you there, there's no secret spot whatsoever. Uh, the the oh, lake I fish think. the most is is Shakopee. I yes, yep. I I says, Texas, you got to get good. Yeah, <laughs> got to get gonna, good. <laughs> I bought a new fish house this year and I want to try ice camping. And so my plans are to try different lakes and go away overnight this year. Um, Did other, you buy a drop house? Uh, no, my boys talked me out of it because they were afraid that they would fight too hard when I died. Um, I bought a, <laughs> I bought a hub house. Um, All right. I bought the uh, Eskimo Outback 450. Okay. And otherwise, the only fish house I've ever had has been a flip over. Um, so most, you spear in a flip over? Yes. Most of my spearing has been out of an Eskimo single person. And I have an Otter Lodge two person that I started with. But at my age, it's getting heavy. And uh, it is for sale. Um, so, but this year, I'm going to try the Hub House. All right. My favorite, so my like growing up, of- growing up, my favorite for spearing was always the, you had the two kind of arched pieces of wood that had the canvas, the collapsible. Oh, the yes. Collapse in. Oh, my God. Those spear houses. And I, every year, I am looking for one of those because you can usually find one for about, you know, 75 bucks, 200 bucks if somebody's selling yep. it. Yep. And you have to hope that the canvas is in okay shape. But man, those fish houses, those collapsibles are just, they're classic for me. Just yes, classic. And you got a lot of the guys will put like snow skis on one of the doors. So when you yep. flip it down, just pull it right off the ice on the, with the skis. It's brilliant. Yes. yes. And they're light. They're well, they're not super light, but they're enough that you can man- maneuver it with a single person usually. Yes, you can get them in the back of a pickup truck pretty darn easy. Yep. Absolutely. So going back, and I think I kind of jumped, I think we we're talking about limits we were talking about limits i think of fish what's interesting is in minnesota there is depending on the uh, 
you call what is it zones i call them zones i don't know if there's a technical yeah, term yeah, they're the pike zones pike zones you can only spear a certain fish or this certain fish or a certain length of fish and that's where for me it gets interesting because when you're sitting over that spear hole you don't know if that fish is over 27 inches or under 27 inches let's just say that's that's the lot and i, I can't remember right if i i don't remember if it was 27 inches 28 inches on depending on the zone uh, a lot depends upon the lake yep that too uh, which i think that might be a deterrent for a lot of people because it's not just the zones you got to know the zones you got to know the lake which i mean you should anyway if you're gonna go fishing you should know the rules and regulations of whatever lake you're fishing right um, no excuse <laughs> right <laughs> it never has worked as an excuse yeah, for me no no I've gotten fined so many times. No, I'm joking. I've never <laughs> <laughs> totally joking. But so it, you're it, fast when, you're, when you're when you're spearing, if you if there is a, a, a rule or a regulation that that fish can't you can't spear a fish or keep a pike over 28 inches or 27 inches, and you're looking at a beautiful fish in that spear hole, and you're going, it's not like you can say, hey, can you hold up a second and put your tape measure down there and measure it and say, okay, uh, good, you're, you're 26 and a half. Okay, now let's go back, game back on, and then you throw your spear at it. It doesn't happen. Uh, for your hole. Okay, um, I, 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 I looked still up the... It doesn't work because it's different. <laughs> yes, I looked up the, the, the limits. The northeast zone is two pike, only one over 26 inches. Well, you can tell small pike. The north central zone, it's 10, um, either two pike over 26 inches and none from 22 to 26 or one from 22 to 26 and one over 26. So they, they've been right fairly fish. decent to us. Um, and the southern zone, minimum size, they have to be 24 inches. And you can only take two down there. Um, so you can get two nice fish and a bunch of little ones in the northeast zone. Um, and the or the north central, the northeast zone, you get one big one and then one little one. So, and uh, the southern zone, two decent sized pike. So you have to you have to know where Take you're it. at, and some yep. some lakes are different. Um, the the state of Minnesota is allowed to rate 100 lakes for northern pike. Um, quite a few years ago, we got to counting the lakes that they regulate, and they were at 125. And we contacted okay. the, the the Department of Natural Resources and said, "Well, you pick out which 25 lakes you want to stop your regulations on." And they had to because it was all the 100 lake rule was mandated by the legislature. Um, so I mean, we pay attention to these things, um, and like I say, the DNR does contact us. Uh, he was in contact with the new fisheries guy on Malax several years ago, and he asked me what I thought, and we gave him our opinion, and he did what he wanted anyhow. Um, they so they basically have shut Malax down again to spearing. Um, I think you can oh, take. Oh, they did? I didn't know. Oh, this. yes, yes. Malax Lake is one of them lakes that before you go. You need to check the DNR website to see what the new regulation is for Northerns. Hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. Um, because yeah. they change the slot changes like, every day. Yep. Yeah, like they change it like people change underwear. Um, so it used to be a good spearing lake, but with the new rules and regulations, they pretty much chase people away. Um, just off the top of my head is you can't take anything over 26 inches on Mille Lacs and with a oh, spear. Oh, even angling. Yes. Um, 
They're so different. Yeah. They're so weird. There's so many big fish on that lake too. It just create that blows my mind. Uh, well, that it, that's just it. And I mean, I I live close to Mille Lacs, um, and you know, there's there's all kinds of theories as to what's happening. Um, the biggest problem is that the lake's just overmanaged. Um, is my opinion. <laughs> it's it, you know they they want the bass fishing tournaments, but the bass eat the little perch, so we got to get rid of them. Um, Mille Lacs Lake has been a walleye lake for as long as I can remember. Um, once they put muskies in there, the muskies found out how good the tulipies taste. That grew ginormous. And Mille Lacs Lake, I think every other year, gets stocked with more muskies. Um and as far as northern stocking, that's pretty much whatever it is in any of the lakes. There's very little right. northern pike stocking. Um, so I'm, I'm curious, Eric, that when, when you were working as a DNR conservation officer in Pennsylvania, did you work with uh, associations or organizations like this Minnesota Dark House and Angling Association that you a part of? Spearing was your level. Well, not, not just spearing, but just in general – would the DNR work with, or even the legislature yeah, work with these sort types of organizations? Trout Unlimited, okay. all these kind of, yeah, we definitely did. Same. Yep. I didn't realize that you guys had, so now and now I know where to go. I, Greg's got some pull. Well, Greg. our organization does. Um, <laughs> well, sure. You're the, not just the member, you're the president. Yes, um, but I'm just a figurehead. I answer to 15 different people. It's true. Um, because it's the chapter presidents are what make the decisions. Um, true. I'm just the one that dropped the drop the axe on it. Um, and I, I go to, well, they have the Minnesota DNR Roundtable. That's coming up next month. Um, I get invi invited to that every year for the Dark House okay. Association. I also belong to the Minnesota Muskie and Pike Alliance Work Group, um, which is, it's mostly muskies, um, but yeah, I get my, I get my shots in on the Northern Pikes. Um, <laughs> and, you know, as to what we need to do, where we need to do it. And, uh, and that all comes from, the membership knowing that they can contact me anytime. Now, I haven't heard you guys mention chain pickerel. Do you guys have chain pickerel up there? No, no, no. We got real northerns. <laughs> not them, not had, them little we had, things. You know, we had northerns in Pennsylvania, but we also had chain pickerel also. Oh, okay. And the pickerel. We had, we had both. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, I always, that's what I always thought too, Greg, is every time, anytime anybody brings up pickerel, I'm like, that's just, that's a pretend pike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, had, we had quite a few in northern Pennsylvania, the chain pickerel. Okay. But there was a size limit of only 15 inches. Northern pike was 24, musky was 30. How okay. big did the pickerel get? I'm not real big. I mean, if you caught a 20 inch pickerel, that's, that's, a, pretty good. that's a really nice pickerel. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would assume. I mean, they're going to fight the same as a uh, as a pike. Now, if we had pickerel, could we spear pickerel? I would assume yes. I'm going to just. I say would yes. assume yes. I would, I'm going to say yes. Everybody watching from Minnesota, if you see a pickerel, you throw your damn spear at it. You go yep. at it. You have at it. Because um, to me, for and what you say, Greg I've said seen, so. Yes. Um, they look like a northern pike to me, just a little thing. Yep. Yep. So, so I'm, I'm going to ask you two questions. Okay. Everybody asks me this question when I'm spearing. You ever fall in the hole? No. Normal people don't, from what I heard from yeah. Sarah. There might have been a clip in chat a little bit ago. Someone falling so, in the hole. Oh. I, I may have almost fallen in last year. Okay. Uh, I, I was, I cut my hole. And I was kind of stomping on it to knock it loose. And it was a little more loose than I was expecting it to be. So that first stomp kind of went 
and it knocked it loose and I wasn't expecting it. And down I went, I, I did not fall in Sarah. I almost fell in my, my leg it's went funny. in, uh, but I caught myself and everybody seemed to think it was pretty funny until I explained, like, I could have just almost died in front of all you guys. You don't understand. Like that was a dangerous was situation. Out, you yeah. bet. You bet. Um, you. But it was more, I was more just trying to give everybody a guilt trip for laughing at me falling into the hole. Right. That falls into the category of you make sure you're all right, and then I'm going to laugh at you. Yeah, all true. Right, I'm going to make sure you're true. all right, but then I'm going to laugh. Let me ask That's, you. This, this, was, this was always what I was told. When we use guys fishing, check guys fishing, that told you whether you fell in or not. Did your boot get full of water? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I was I was down to my. That's what they had. If your it was one leg. Fell in. Yeah, they always <laughs> say that. If your boots full of water, you fell in. That's all they used to say. Yeah, well, maybe. maybe. Uh, but yeah, I I don't know of anybody that's ever actually like when you're sitting in the spear house, anybody that's actually fell into the hole. Um, I I've been close, like. Cause it's dark and you're trying to walk around. I'm saying you got stuff all over the place and strings hanging. I got strings hanging yep. over. And when you're streaming, you got cords and you know electrical cords and charging cords and battery. It's, there's so many things to trip over, and in the dark. Uh, so you definitely, uh, <laughs> you can get close. Uh, yes. Uh, now, uh, one thing that I've always been told, I don't know if it's true or not because I've never done it. But they say if you fall underneath the ice, go to the block. Don't oh, yeah, go to yeah. the light. Yeah. Um, right. Because that would hopefully be your hole. Um, I don't cut an overly large size hole. And I'm sort of hoping that if I did fall in, I'd wedge. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> You'd be a little fish attractor with your. Well, yeah, yeah, with, yeah, with, yeah, with my big old florals dangling. <laughs> uh, 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 so, <laughs> but again, I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> Have you ever been able to release a pike that you've speared? No. No. For the first I time ever, go last year I did. Head. Really. But we, I was with my friend, and the the pike came in, and he threw the spear. And if I I shit you not, Greg, that thing went right through the nostril. Oh really? One time, one time, went right through his nos nostril and poked down below. And I, he pulled it up, and I'm like, it was a small pike. I'm like, um, I'm just gonna throw it back. <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't. He didn't do anything other than hook the fish. Basically, you know, you put a little hole in the bottom of his jaw or the mouth. But I'm like, he went literally that time went perfectly right through that nostril. It was crazy. I'll be darned. Yeah. Well, that was like first time, ever, first like time for that. everything. Yeah. Yep. Um, I've either totally missed him or I get him right behind the head. And there's no releasing him then. So let's talk a little bit about spears. We were kind of talking about the types of spears and people making spears. Uh, I now, luckily enough, have a custom spear where I love it. It's awesome. I love the balance, the weight. I love everything. Um, and I've had spears in the past that I've, I've paid a lot of money for, but they just didn't seem to work as well. I wouldn't. I would miss more than I wouldn't miss. Okay. And I've been told that a lot of that had to do with the first spear that I was struggling with. It was the tines were flat and even the arch okay. was flat versus okay. having totally round barbs or pole or rods. Yes. Yeah, so and then a weight. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Um, is I'm assuming the logic and I'm not calling you a scientist, but let's pretend you were a scientist. My logic is if you have a flat, anything, that you're pushing through water, it's going to plane. Yes. That's and it's my going thought. to plane out. Yeah. What versus if you've got something that's round, your tines are round, that's going to cut through the water. So I'm um, accurate. Yeah, that's my thought. It's it's like my daredevils. They're flat. They don't just sink. They wobble. 
Um, I have one of those flat tine spears and I've never used it. Um, it just sits in my garage. Um, the, the one spear that I really, really have an itch to buy and I fought it for three years now is a single tine. Um, that would really be a challenge. Dude, fancy pants, Greg. Yeah, it's, I'd yeah. like to try one. The ultimate primitive fishing really is what you guys are doing. I mean, well, and um, and and I don't want to put words into Greg's mouth, but I isn't that part of what your association does? Is it's you're educating the population of, of spear fishing <laughs> is an ancient. From from the Native Americans, this is an ancient way of harvesting fish. Yes, and it's it's something that is you know it's <laughs> a part of a large large culture, and it, it seems to be kind of dwindling out. And we would love more people to be doing it. Yes, yes. Part of history. Um, in fact, we were starting to dwindle till 2014 uh, when fear the fear the spear started on facebook um since then our numbers have rised um in 2014 there was 25,776 spearing licenses sold in the state of minnesota wow yes um well that's you have a spearing license you don't use your regular fishing license correct, correct. Um, so that's why you're fishing kind of game a, along with you, because they got yes. to make that extra money. I, I knew it right there. The same as yep, yep. <laughs> every state's the same way. It's about this right here. Oh yeah, yep. it, it's like the pheasant stamp. It's like duck stamp. Um, it, it's more money that they get. Um, in 1957, the first year that I could find regulator numbers, Minnesota sold. 50,534 spearing licenses. Yeah. A lot. That's a lot. How much does a spearing license cost you for? Uh, I think it's $7 now. Six bucks? Yes. I was going to say six yeah, or seven six bucks. Yeah, six and then, then the buck for. Uh, so how many last year did they sell? Um, well, I don't have last year's. Oh. But in 2020. They sold twenty three thousand eight hundred and sixty seven spearing licenses. What so, uh, this is, yeah, yeah, wow. that, yeah, times six dollars. That's a lot of money. Take it. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's a lot more than six dollars, though. Well, then stay out of the DNR. <laughs> Right, and great. eventually yeah. you're not going to be invited. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, you know, you're yeah. like, hey, we might have, we might have a new rejected. Yeah, we might have a new uh, charter president in this guy. I'm kind of impressed, and I go make a comment like that, and he's like, huh, "When is this over? <laughs> yeah, yeah. got to get going." <laughs> go. uh, all right, uh, so I, I have another question for you with your decoys. Since you don't use live decoys at all, and you're just using artificial. What's your what's your number one color or your color scheme? Um, basically, it's two. It's red and white. Yep. Or the fire tiger. Yep. Yep. That's the two I use. Yeah. And you can. Um, the nice thing is you can buy these decoys. <clears throat> I don't. I don't remember. I don't even want to think. I think um, uh, the gentleman that you brought up earlier, Whittier. I think that's where my last set of decoys came from. Yeah, uh, he's out of Dakota. North Dakota, I believe. Yep. Uh, great decoy is great guy. Uh, I've I think I've lost two of them now. I had two of them stolen the year before, and I got three more. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you can get decoys from these guys that are just gorgeous. I would never in a billion years put it down the hole. But even no. even the non art ones that are working, I mean, you're still paying 60, 80, 100 bucks for some of these decoys. And you, they've got them in, you can buy you can. a carp decoy. You can buy a, a perch decoy yes. or, you know, all oh. these different fish. And I go back, just give me the There's white a and guy red. That's all I want. Yep. Yeah. There's a guy I know. His name is Kurt Sawin. Um, 
he carves decoys. Uh, he's got a loon, a mallard. Did you lose me? And now you're back. Good, you're good. good. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a guy I know. Kurt Soin is his name. And he carves a loon, um, a mallard. Um, he carves all kinds of different ones. I've seen airplanes, sharks. Um, so, I mean, it's the, the sky's the limit. Uh, our, our vice president of our organization, he carves decoys. And he never charges over ten dollars. What? And I don't know his name. Right? I'm calling him tomorrow. Um, Wayne Lederbrand. He lives up by Perm. Um, if you go to any of the decoy shows, um, he'll be there. Uh, and I've got a lot of his decoys. Um, I'm saying you've been ripped off this whole time, Vexus. Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, no, Rick, Rick, Rick makes some really nice decoys. I actually, I yes, he does. I have one right back here. I had him make me an extra one. I'm like, I want the walleye. I'm not going to oh, use it, but I want no. the walleye decoy. And I just have it just perched up, just sitting there. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have three Whittier decoys and they've never seen a lake. They're hanging over my archway in my, into my office. Yep. And You'd think I would I've, be smarter, but yes. I've got... Um, two were stolen, and I've got three sitting at the bottom of the lake, and then I've got one sitting on top of my gun safe. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm assuming you don't carry a big magnet with you when you go spearing. I will now. From now on. <laughs> I he never literally didn't even think charts. of that. Yeah. You need to become a member of our organization. Uh, I guess so. Um, I always carry a big magnet. Um, so that if for chance I forget to tie off my spear, I can bring that up off the bottom. Um, and I've never and done decoy. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't done it yet. Um, thanks, fish. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not gonna, I'm just telling but no, like happen. I say, just get go to a cheap store, buy a 10 15 pound magnet, and it'll have an eye bolt on it, and just clip it onto a rope. And then you can lower that down and retrieve your decoys. Well, god dang. Brilliant. You have to make sure they're metal fins, though. And not yes. aluminum. Yeah, Some yeah, of the yeah. guys are using aluminum. Right. Uh, now, one of the things that old timers are going to tell you, if you are if you are on a lake and it's not crystal clear, which we are in Minnesota, we're spoiled with a lot of lakes that are beautifully <laughs> crystal clear. But if you go to a lake going. and it's not crystal clear and it's a little murky, what the old timers say is they're going to take a bunch of eggshells and they're going to drip, drop the eggshells down at the bottom of the hole. Yep. And for all those that are going, why in the world would you drop eggshells down the hole? It's so you're creating a difference, right? So you, you can see white from the eggshells at the bottom, murky water. Yep. So really all you're seeing is maybe even – movement coming over those eggshells between eggshells and you and that's yes. how you know there's a fish there or it helps you see the fish better yep and that is what? that it is illegal is correct water. um you, you know they talk about potatoes they talk about navy beans um it all depends upon the warden <laughs> if you get caught or not well, well no it sounds dumb but yeah um it depends upon the warden Interesting. Uh, they don't have to tag you, but I've known guys that have gotten tagged for it. Um, I, I mean, technically, and, and Eric, I don't know if if you guys didn't really have ice, so you didn't have to deal with it necessarily. Oh, but I dealt yeah. with ice all the time. Okay, it, I think the reason was it's it's not natural to the lake, right? So if you're dropping eggshells it's down, litter, eggshells, eggs is what they're calling it. Yeah, litter. They right. call it litter. Yep. But yeah. what you can do. Is you can make a nice little square rectangle with white PVC that has an attachment. Put slowly put that down the hole. Now you've got something at the bottom of your hole that's white, and you can drop your thing down to hook it back up and pull it back up when you're done. Then you're fine. Yep. As long as you can retrieve it out of the hole or out of the water, um, I would fight that one in court if they gave you a ticket for it. For sure. I know some some guys put an X. They they make each leg a certain length, like 
26 inches, and they use that as a gauge. It all depends upon where the pike comes in in the water column, but um, yeah. It's very flattering that you didn't know this, but when they're making that X, it's actually an homage to me, Vexus underscore X. Um, so it's, it's I'm flattered. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. You're not cocky at all. <laughs> Oh. I can't even. I can't even catch a fish. Much. Yeah. There's nobody's paying me any homages. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> fish. Do you have any questions? I, well, you kind of asked your one question that you had earlier, um, but you didn't really get into it. Do you want to ask anything about single spear fishing or underwater spearing? He brought it up. I was just wondering if it was it was under like the same because when I think, you know, I hear spear fishing, I think someone's under the water with a spear gun, and I didn't know if it was under the same, you know, laws or if you like you can there. spear rough fish under the water with a spear gun, but you have to be completely submerged. You can't you uh. can't be above the surface of the water or above the ice um is it the same thing with like bow fishing too yeah no almost the same thing except you using <laughs> a bow on the boat like it's yeah there have been guys that have used a bow spear fishing um because you can use a bow and arrow for carp in the summer yeah they do that um <laughs> Sure. And I, I've seen videos of guys using a bow in a spear house. Um, For pike? Yes. I have a hard really? time with a with a six-tine, seven-tine spear, let alone a, an arrow. Yeah. Um, but I've always had problem with that light diffusion or diffraction, whatever they call it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, when I've gone after carp. But, um, yeah, it's... Um, like I say, it's you really have to pay attention to the spearing because, let's see, page 67. I got to hold on to my phone because I'm losing battery power fast. We're, we're almost done, so don't worry. Okay. Okay. Um, well, that's, here we go. You've got spearing, harpooning, and dip nets. And that is for sucker, bullhead, red horse, carp, buffalo, freshwater drum, bullfin, and gar. And then you have dark house spearing. And that talks about over the ice. Um, it, has, it has no bearing on the, the rest of it. So... Because I know the question has always come up, well, if I mount my fish house, my spear house on a pontoon, because this year the season's not going to, we're not going to have ice on the 15th, can I spear through it? And my answer has always been, you do what you think is right, but I sure ain't going to try it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think um, I would either. No, um, but the season is technically open. Interesting. Yeah. Well, tis the season. We just need ice at this point, and uh, I'm I'm anxiously waiting. It's 60 degrees this week in Minnesota. It's not going to get us any closer to our uh, our ice. No, no, no. Yeah, Do you have no. any any uh, any further questions? No, not really. I, I I just was interested in the seasons and the size limits and stuff like that. Because it's complicated. That in PA because we they just didn't have it. It wasn't legal. So okay, so was it not legal or was it just not a thing? If you had ice that you could get out on, not spearfish. It, Got it. You, it was totally illegal. It's called an illegal use to take fish. Interesting. All right. Well, Greg, I can't thank you enough for agreeing. I know uh, this, this maybe wasn't the, the most ideal thing for you, but I was excited to have you on, and I was excited to kind of get some exposure to uh, to our communities for what ice spearing is and, and what it's all about and the different things. So okay. I want to thank you for uh, coming on and being a guest. 
And I wish you the best of luck this winter with your spearing. You'll you'll definitely see me again. I'm sure I'll reach out to okay. you and probably be All at right. some of your meetings and join up on the association. Okay, good. Thank you um, for coming. Yeah, I, right. I appreciate you exposing me to something new. And I, I guess if, I, and I'll even go so far as to say if anybody that's watching this wants to talk to me personally, if they go to mndarkhouse.org, all of my contact information is right there on the website. Um, my home address, you can mail me a letter, my email address, and my home phone number. So, um, more than willing to answer questions for people. Awesome. That's, that's fantastic. You don't get that too often. I did just put a, um, we did just drop that link into our stream chat. And I also dropped the Facebook, the Minnesota Dark House Facebook group link in our chat as well. Okay, good. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's awesome. All right. Well, we will see everybody next Sunday night. Who do we have next week? We have Andrew, SCR Rods. <laughs> Some custom rod right. talk. Right. So that'll be fun. They're also <laughs> locked in on Jim on the 17th, by the way. Mark it on your calendar. Yeah, Jim board. So we can go over. We got Andrew for with SCR Rods next week. And then we're back with Wild Bill at Texas Select Seasonings. Don't forget Texas Select Seasonings. Carolina Basco. Use code Cast a Camo to get your 15% off of all your Carolina Basco bait needs and your meat seasoning with texas select seasoning so we're back with bill on the 26th and we may have a guest on the third we don't know yet and then we're locked in with bob st pierre from pheasants forever on the 10th and jim bortz the world-class artist on the 17th and i can't wait for that one i can't wait to look at some of his paintings again and, oh he's amazing we should get i should get him to do a dark house spearing picture painting I just can't afford it and I can't trade I can't trade mule deer hunts for it either. So I'm kind of <laughs> shit out of luck. Unfortunately right. for me. All right. Until next Sunday, we will see everybody. And remember, don't litter, you guys. Don't litter. And we'll see you all next week. Later all.